Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Molten Modular. Today we're looking at the Wavephonics W314. It's an entire row of modular. It's a curated modular synthesizer for you to begin your modular journey or to expand your existing journey. It plonks an entire patchable modular synthesizer on your desk and lets you play and fiddle and craft and produce sounds and create beeps and and boops and movements and sweeps and modulations all sorts of that lovely eurac stuff and it's all here perfectly formed in this great big lug of a box of a eurac case here's a synthesizer almost sort of it's it's a it's a modular synthesizer a synthesizer that has a number of modules which will please all sorts of areas of the sort of thing that you want to do while perhaps leaving the odd thing out because you've only got a certain amount of space to fit these things in so inevitably there's going to be choices which excite and choices where you go what what but that also comes down to personal choice because we've all perhaps had our journey through Eurac and we know what it is that makes a decent synthesizer for you and your view of that could well be different from what Wavephonics are trying to present here. But if you're a beginner, then I can start off by saying that this is a great little collection of modules. In fact, it follows much of what I did with my first row of modular. After I did all of that research and thinking about it and deep, deep thoughts and investigations, this is more or less kind of what I came up with. So it's a solid start. As solid as the as the case, I would say. It's a good, solid place to start. Now, Wayphonics produce modules that have a vintage flavour. They're very interesting. They don't seem to have been around very long, and I've had a few of their modules from last year. The uh, the Poly 8 VCO, uh, eight, eight oscillators stuck into a single module. I've also had the 2140 low pass filter and the 3320 high pass filter and I've enjoyed them very much. They have uh, a quality and a vibe to them which is very very pleasing without being outrageously expensive. In fact they're all really good value and this row of Eurorack right here is also really good value. What does value mean in terms of Eurorack? Well that's obviously a hard thing to say but Consider this is, I think, 1169. They have it on the website. So that is in the ballpark of something like the, the Moog Sound Studio, where you get a Mother 32 and a DFAM, similar in price to the Moog Grandmother, similar in price to the Behringer System 15, which actually they share a little bit of thought and aesthetic. The, the Behringer System 15 is based on Moog Modular, and the black front panels on the way phonics modules share that same kind of reflection that identity it looks very mogi and so i imagine comparisons with the behringer modules are going to be pretty expected and, and kind of obvious the difference being is that way phonics are designing their modules to run in a in a now system in a in a system that you want now the behringer mode modules were all based in the past which retained all of the, the weirdness of the V-Trig, S-Trig stuff and the, the kind of things that we've left behind that Moog Modular were doing back in the day. And those are the things that Behringer has very much wanted to capture. Whereas with Wave Phonics, we are pushing out there with, a, with an elegant, streamlined, sensible approach to Eurac. Right, enough talking for the moment. Let me make some sounds. What I've done, I've patched the whole lot together so everything that can make sound is going to make sound and let's just go with that and then I'll talk you through uh, the individual parts and talk about how we feel it sits together and whether it's a whether it's a good thing or not <laughs> so let me bring you in a bit closer to start with Oh, my God. 
So let's pull this apart and look at things in a little bit more detail. So starting from left to right we have a 4x4 buffered multiple which comes in extremely handy. Then we've got the 3340 dual voltage control oscillator. These oscillators here, the 3340 oscillators, are, are lovely. I have eight of them in the Poly 8 over here. But this is two of them. Two of them working brilliantly together. You can use them as a like a dual oscillator synthesizer or use one as modulation into the other they are completely identical and they're not normal behind the scenes or anything you patch them in exactly as you imagine that you would then you've got the 1847 wavetable voltage controlled digital oscillator this is really interesting and we'll come and have a look at this in a minute but you've got wavetable selection you've got different wavetables on the sub with a lot of voltage control you've got glide and bit crushing. Next up is the six channel mixer for mixing together all of your sources. 
and then the 2140 low pass filter now this low pass filter i have this also over there this is really nice it's starting to get into my system more and more i mean you may know that i'm a big fan of the jove filter with that that roll and squelchy sound but this this it just keeps just keeps getting better and better i'm forever switching to this one more often than not and getting a really good vibe out of it there's some saturation in that signal and the resonance just goes completely bonkers when you take off the uh this this switchy thing here but otherwise it's got a really good feel you've got both uh two fm inputs um, and then CV controller resonance and one volt per octave cutoff. It's a very comprehensive, simple and rewarding little filter. Moving on, we have an envelope generator here, the 3310, which does your standard envelope stuff. You have another one here, which is the voltage controlled ones. You've got a bit of voltage control over the ADSR individual parts, although you probably don't have enough modulation in the system as a whole to really get to grips with that but as you expand or if you have more modular then that is something you'll be able to use more of in between the two you've got a dual vca you're going to have either an exponential or a linear one and having a dual one means that you can split off your two oscillators or your two oscillators and the digital wavetable oscillator have them played with differently from the envelope generators one nice feature on the envelopes before i forget is that it has a through so you've got a gate coming into one of them you can patch that to the gate in on the next one and have them running together you know one running your vca another one running your filter really nice feature then at this end we have a noise generator if you like that sort of thing i'm not me really particularly not massively into noise but I can understand and appreciate the value of adding that to the background of a sound or using it, of course, for percussive purposes. Next to that is a ring modulator, which is very interesting. And then finally, we've got a voltage controlled low frequency oscillator. So those are the modules in the system as a whole. And you can undoubtedly discuss forever what should go in a starter system but from wavephonics point of view they have a range of modules and those are the ones that they are going to choose from and from their perspective this is what they thought would make a great starter system and i don't think i can really argue with that there's a few points which we'll get to as we go but let's start off by hearing a couple of things let's hear the oscillators so let's take the square wave output plug that into input one on the mixer of both in fact I could plug all three in at once let's do that so let's use all three waveforms into the mixer because hopefully through this video I can show a little bit of the versatility of what this can do because it's not just one thing when I was playing all the sounds a moment ago I had everything running together and you don't have to do that. That's just one way of patching it, the most obvious way. And if there's something we know about Eurorack is that it's not designed necessarily to be obvious, or it shouldn't be obvious. It can be all sorts of things. You can find yourself down all sorts of roads, plugging one thing into another. And hopefully, through this video, I'll be able to show a little bit of that. So we're taking output, plugging that into... down a little bit plug that into our VCA now they're no longer in tune with each other because I messed about with it during the performance so let's see if we can get them together nice so I've got all the waveforms going on at the moment let's bring it down to just the square waves. So that's the two square waves together. Just make sure pulse width is about the same. But you can already hear how delicious those two oscillators sound together. And you could potentially try very hard to get that bang on, but that slight detuning. Is 
so nice. Let's try the triangle. Simple enough, and then the sawtooth. And this is the real winner for me, is the sawtooth is just delicious. Now what I can do is I can patch in some notes from my keyboard over here. in an envelope which will be gated from the key step Probably what I really want to do is take it through the filter. There's that crazy resonance. If you turn on the compensation, it gets a little bit more under control. And this is where I can do that nice thing where I take the through from that envelope, plug it into this one. And then I can use the output of this to control the filter. Let's simplify down a little bit. Let's take the sine wave out of that, jam that into the FM input. For a nice bit of FM. Awesome so there's loads you can do just with those those two oscillators by themselves. In fact, why don't we, before we move on, just do a little bit of ring modulation? Because that's always a weird one. Go, what, what, ring what? 
So if you take both of your oscillators and plug one into the carrier and one into the modulator, you can then enjoy those ring modulated sounds. So the ring modulator just brings in a whole other texture. Take your your fat, lovely sawtooth or triangle waveforms out of your, your two oscillators, plug them into the ring modulator and just enjoy a whole different tonal experience. Right, let's focus in on the digital wavetable oscillator then, this one here. Now this is quite interesting. It's not it's not got masses and masses of wavetables inside. You've got 16 waveforms within here and eight waveforms on the sub. But their relationship is really quite interesting. First of all, the output is in semitones, which is interesting, although the fine tuning isn't. But the coarse tuning is. You've then got a wave selection which morphs you through that wavetable. It's nice, it's really nice. Obviously you could patch in the LFO into the Wave CV input. And then you've got control over or an attenuator over how much. It's interesting that when you turn up the LFO to faster rates, it seems to then kind of forget about it. <laughs> it's like it goes, oh no, it's too fast, mate. I ain't going to cope with that. So it sort of loses its modulatable ability as you speed up the LFO to some degree. Then when you slow down again, you then get a fuller range. At least that's what I'm finding. Yeah, really nice. I can, I can play for that for for ages. Now the sub is different. The sub has eight waveforms, but it has it each waveform on four octaves. So there's like a high octave, lower, lower, and then lower, lower. Go to another waveform, and it goes down in octaves, and another one. Now these don't morph, these step. So when you stick an LFO into the sub CV, it gives you this, this other vibe, this rhythmic vibe that you perhaps weren't expecting. You're expecting morphing waveforms when in fact you're getting this stepping up and down through octaves as well as stepping through waveforms. It's really interesting. And of course if you combine that with the other waveform, Oh, 
whole load of stuff going on. Take out that modulation for a minute. It really gives you an opportunity to find the sort of sound that you're after. Like an, whether it's an organy sound. Or more of a clangy sound. And you can mix and match. So you move the wavetable on the top. It doesn't have to be the same as the one underneath. So you're not stuck with this like square wave sub oscillator like you so often are. See, that's World in Action, that is. <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about. So it's like the wave selection on the sub becomes an element of itself. Features on this first is a nice bit crusher, which takes everything a bit square. got a glide if I route some notes back into it. There's your glide, no stepping in that either. So those are your oscillators. You've also got a noise generator over here. A bit of white noise. Pink noise. And then this random low frequency noise it doesn't really sound of anything but I imagine it's kind of used I don't know it's used to as a bit more of a, a, a randomization element that you can add to something else so if I take the output of something <laughs> what am I talking about I don't really think that's a whole lot of good by itself. <laughs> it's probably better if it's stuck through a sampling hole that can then grab hold of one of these and give you a bit of a note. But on its own, it gives you some bubbly bubbly. Which might have some use. Possibly.
Phonics W314. It's a nice selection of modules that gives you a very wide palette of sounds. The inclusion of that wavetable oscillator is, I think, completely, completely genius. Because although you can lose yourself completely in a pair of lovely analog oscillators, having something wavetable, something different, a whole different tonal explanation in there gives you a place to go, a place to take it. Once you've gone beyond making your your oscillator into filter experience once you've done that mono synth thing it gives you a whole other place to play which you can do by itself or you can start bringing different aspects back into each other so the the tonal possibilities are just magnified and increased and exploded in other words like that by the existence of that wavetable oscillator and it's interesting in of itself it's not something that i've heard anything quite like it because wavetables, yeah, okay, wavetables tend to feel a bit sort of thin and samey, I think, after a while, and yeah, you're morphing through, and that sounds nice. And we, we enjoy that, but it, it it's often a bit, to me, a bit glassy, a bit weedy. But that sub in there, that sub wave, just gives it a whole other thing. Because it's not just one waveform sitting underneath. It's all sorts of different waveforms at different octaves that you can you can manipulate, as well as just enjoy it being there, you can make it be part of the, the ever-changing modulation in the background. That's really nice. Really, really nice. So let's spend some time on its shortcomings then. <laughs> no, that's not really true. Does it have shortcomings? No, 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 this is purely opinion, 
really, based upon would I have chosen that? Would I have chosen that? That kind of thing. There's no right answer to it. All I can do is is kind of point out some of the roadblocks, I guess, that I ran into, which is in, which is going to be inevitable in any small compact system because you can't have it all in there. Not in Eurorack. You'd need a you know a regular synth for that. That has everything in this. Uh, has a great go at being an entire synthesizer, but it can't quite manage it because the the permutations and the possibilities are just so huge. You can't cover it all. I mean, there's no effects in here. There's no reverb, no delay, no digital effects section like you would get on a synthesizer. Well, obviously, there's just not the room for that. Perhaps more importantly, there's no there's no way to play anything. <laughs> there's no sequencer. Again, space. I mean, I've got the eight-step sequencer that Wavephonics do up here, up here, which is fantastic. I love that thing. Fits perfectly with this, but there just is not the room. So Wavephonics are assuming that you have some kind of, you know, a key step or a sequencer, or something else that's got CV and gate outputs that you can run into this to make sound. Otherwise, it's a lovely drone machine, but you're going to need something else to plug into it in order to create those notes. I also mentioned how there's far more modulation inputs, for instance, on the voltage controlled envelope and the voltage controlled LFO. There's far more sockets than you have actual modulators for. You've only got the one LFO over here and it's a little bit of a strange one. It doesn't have selectable waveforms, kind of. It kind of moves from one thing to another through its, its wave knob here, moving from sort of sine wave to sort of slopey wave to, to something in between. So it's not a regular LFO, and I wonder whether something simpler there would be you know, less confusing for beginners who are expecting good solid waveforms. So that one, I think I, I would I would certainly question. Maybe there's a better LFO to put in there. The main gripe I guess I have is really with the mixer. I mean, the mixer is nice, a six-channel mixer. It's good, solid, I like it. I should also point out about how all, of, how all of these patch points are, you know, south of the modules, giving you all this room to play in so you don't get too entangled. That's another good point for Wavephonics modules. But focusing on the mixer for a second, the mixer has six inputs and one output. Well, it has two outputs, it has a negative and a positive output. But for a synth such as this, that's enough to get every single sound source in, but you only have the one destination. What do I mean by that in practical terms? Well, what I would like to do, I would like to address the, the dual oscillators and the digital oscillator separately. I would like them to do separate things. Now, I can put different tunes in, but in order to hear them, I have to put them all through the mixer. Because the mixer only has one output, it means they all have to go through the filter. And then they all go through the same VCA. And that is a little bit limiting. Now, I don't have to use a mixer. I could go straight into the VCA and use that by itself. The problem with that is that if I put the, the wavetable into the VCA, I've got nowhere to put the sub. Because the wavetable has two outputs, a sub output and the main output. And I want to mix those two together. So... You know, in a real ideal world, what the mixer needs to have is individual outputs, which are normalized so that your six channel mixer could become two three channel mixers or three two channel mixers. Because with three two channel mixers, I could mix together my two waveforms from the dual oscillator, mix together my sub and main from the wavetable and then mix together two modulators like the output of an LFO and an envelope. Mix those two things together within that same mixer and then route those to different places. That I think would give you a much a much more versatility. Now you can do this by incorporating a bit of other Euro rack, plugging into other things in your system, but it does mean taking stuff outside this rack. And if this is your first rack of stuff, then there are things that you perhaps could be doing that you're not really going to be able to. A quick update on my criticism of the six channel mixer. I've just been talking to Two Wave Phonics about it and I haven't quite finished the video, so I could throw this bit in, in that they are jigging it about and redesigning it a little bit to provide two separate outputs. So you've got channels one, two, and three going to an output and channels four, five, and six, or all six to one output. 
So you can now split off the dual oscillators and the wavetable oscillator into two different mixable sections, which is awesome. I mean, it really highlights one of the advantages of the boutique maker is that they are fast. They can make adjustments. They can change and adapt far, far quicker than a large manufacturer can. And that's an awesome an awesome thing. I love it. So, so yes, while I will leave my comments about the mixer there because they're, they're still valid in, in many situations and give you something to think about, it is awesome that Wavephonics have chosen to make a change and to make that a much better and more versatile module. Hurrah! Fantastic. The other thing that's missing is an output module. So there's no like headphone socket, there's no line output. It's assuming you're gonna take an output from something, possibly the mixer, possibly the VCA, and plug that into something else. I mean, I've got the output to run the scopes on here. I've got the output just going into an audio interface. So you don't have to have more Eurorack in order to hear it, but you are gonna to have to experiment with what works best for plugging into your system. So when you call it the W314 a synthesizer, it kind of is, but it, it doesn't quite contain all the aspects that you imagine a synthesizer should. And that's purely because it's restricted to this size of things. It's all dependent on the size of the modules and the module choice within it. And so from Wavephonics's roster, from its catalogue of modules, this is a great choice of stuff. <laughs> And maybe over time they'll develop more modules that will perhaps refine it and, and give it more legs and, and more places to go. But as it is, it's a super fine system. Super fine collection of stuff. I can play on that dual oscillator and filter all day. I can spend another whole day on the wavetable one. So just those elements themselves are fantastic. And then you've got all the utilities that you need. The malts are very, very important so that you can run everything from a, from a single pitch input coming in. You can go into the malts, spread that around all your oscillators and use it as this big fat monosynth, which is glorious, which is what I did at the beginning. And so, you know, every time I start talking about it, I can think of another way of using it, another way of rooting it, something else that you could do with it. You could spend another day playing with remodulation, whatever the heck that is about, and then get into generating percussive noises with the noise generator. It has everything. It has the lot. Everything you need to play with and to get to grits with to understand the nature of synthesizers and how they work. I mean, what more could you want? Uh, the case, people have asked about the case. It's a solid wooden case. Very, very chunky. You know, it's all right. It's very solid in there. Uh, there is this, this gap, gap top and bottom, which just makes you wonder a little bit. I mean, inside is, is an LED. There's some LEDs in there. Uh, so a little bit of blue, blue color sort of pours out of it I suppose but having those gaps there which I guess you could say of a ventilation or or for collecting dust not entirely sure it seems a little strange but again talking to Wayphonics uh, he said that you know these were the cases that they could source at the time that fit the kind of price point they're trying to do they wanted it to be wooden but they didn't want to have to keep you know it, it, pushing the price too high to make it unobtainable and as i said at the beginning the the price point on this is really good really really good you know comparable to a behringer system you know which is awesome for a boutique manufacturer like wavephonics and without a doubt i can tell you that the quality of these modules is superb is is excellent all the way excellent you know down to the nuts that go on the patch sockets are going to outlast the Behringer ones any day of the week. So there you go, the Wayphonics W314. I hope that was helpful. Wayphonics are turning out, I think, to be a fantastic little company of modular makers. Here in the UK, they are. I'm really enjoying all of the stuff they've put together. It has such a great, you know, classic vibe to it, and yet is, is surprisingly and extraordinarily affordable so if you've not come across them before do check them out if not for this whole rig then just check out the modules that they do because they're all they're all decent all of them and you can have them in either this sort of mogesque front panel or 
the slightly weirdy Oberheim white, would you call that? I don't know. I don't know what you'd call that. But the the strange, creamy front panel as well. Both of them look look great. So I can hardly recommend them, generally speaking, as a manufacturer of Eurorack modules. So I think what I'll do is I'll I'll wire it all together again into a single sound, <laughs> to a single thing, and I'll bring in the eight-step sequencer, which is also theirs, just to just to run something into it as I play us out. And in the meantime, go make some tunes. Thank you.